So I'm going to continue reading from some different sources about fasting, and uh, this time I'm going to read from the Pictorial Bible Dictionary, and I read from Got Questions in the last video. Let me find fasting really quick. Should have already done this. But um, I just want to say, you know, God Question says that you can fast from different things. The Bible pretty much, anytime someone fasts in the Bible, it's usually food or water or both or sex between married couples. And, you know, I think that those are things that, like, the body really craves for. Um, I think that it's true to a certain extent that people can fast from different things, but, you know, like, after I got saved, not right away, but after a while, like, I stopped listening to rock music, and I pretty much stopped listening to music altogether. Every now and then I'll listen to hymns, that's about it. So, does that mean, like, from the last year or so that I've been fasting from music? I mean, uh, I really don't think so. Like, is that something that, you know, is that just me obeying the biblical command to abstain from all appearance of evil, to, you know, have nothing to do with the unfruitful works of darkness, or is that, um, just something that I'm, like, fasting from? You know, so, there's kind of, like, a line where we draw, I think, and, uh, but that being said, next week, when I'm going to be fasting from food, I also... Uh, plan not to watch any videos, like any YouTube videos. I just want to um, read the Bible and pray, and I will listen to some audio CDs that I have, some teachings. But I, but so so in a way, I will abstain temporarily from watching videos. And uh, I don't think that there's anything wrong with watching the videos. You know, as long as you know. Depends on the content, you know. I I just watch, you know, Bible teachings and documentaries. I don't, I don't watch, you know, like fictional things where people play roles and stuff like that. You know, I try to watch stuff that I can learn from that talks about real people, real events. Uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with that, really. Um, but so so in a way, I'll be fasting from that as well. But. Uh, I don't really consider the fact that I've I've quit watching, you know, like, movie movies, or that I've quit listening to music for the most part. I don't really consider that fasting. Um, I've done that for quite a while. Anyways, um, I'll read this, and then hopefully I'll make another video and kind of summar up, su summarize things in my own words or whatever. So this says fasting. Uh, meaning abstinence from food and drink for a longer or short for a longer or shorter period is frequently mentioned in the scriptures. Sometimes instead of the single word fast, the descriptive phrase to afflict the soul is used. The reference being to physical fasting rather than to spiritual humiliation. This uh, term is used in various parts of the Old Testament, but is the only one used to denote the religious observance of fasting in the Pentateuch. Uh, Leviticus 16, 29 through 31, 23, 27, Numbers 30, 13, Psalm 35, 13, Isaiah 58, 3, 5, and 10. The only fast required by Moses was that of the Day of Atonement before the Babylonian captivity. It was the one regular fast. Leviticus 16, 29, 31, 23, 27 through 32, Numbers 29, 7, and Jeremiah 30, 36, 6. During this period, there are many examples of fasts on special occasions held because of transgression or to ward off present or impending calamity. Samuel called for such a fast, 1 Samuel 7, 6. Jehoiakim and the princess pr proclaimed a fast after Barak had read the uh, con condemnatory word of the Lord given through Jeremiah, Jeremiah 36, 9. Jezebel hypocritically enjoined a fast when she sought to secure Naboth's, Naboth's uh, vineyard. 1 Kings 21, 9 and 12. We read of individuals who were moved to fast. For example, David, when his child became ill, 2 Samuel 
12, 16, 21 through 23. And Ahab, on hearing his doom, 1 Kings 21, 27. After the captivity, four annual fasts were held in memory of the national calamities through which the nation had passed. They are mentioned only in Zechari Zechariah 7, 1 through 7, and 8, 19. These fasts, established during the captivity, were held on the 4th, 5th, 7th, and 10th months. The Mishnah and St. Jerome give information on the historical events which these facts were intended to commemorate. By the time of, G of Christ, they had fallen into disuse and were not revived until after the destruction of Jerusalem by the Romans. In Rabbionic times, the Feast of Purim, the origin of which is explained in Esther 9, 31-32, was accompanied by a fast in commemoration of the fast of Esther, Mordecai, and the Jews, Esther 4, 1-3, and 15-17. The Old Testament gives a number of instances of other fasts in which the whole people joined. Ezra 8, 21-23, Nehemiah 9, 1. Examples of fasts by individuals are given in Nehemiah 1, 4 and Daniel 9, 3. A fast of great strictness was proclaimed by the heathen king of Nineveh to avert the destruction threatened by Jehovah through Jonah, through Jonah, Jonah 3, 5. Fasting among the Israelites was either partial or total, depending upon the length of the fast. When Daniel mourned three full weeks, he ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh nor wine in his mouth. Daniel 10, 2, and 3. The fast of the Day of Atonement was from even, even till even. Leviticus 23, 32. And no food or drink was taken. Other day-long fasts were from morning till even, evening. Longer fasts are mentioned in Nehemiah 1, 4 and Daniel 10, 2, 3. The fasts of Moses and Elijah for 40 days were exceptional. Exodus 34, 28 and 1 Kings 19, 8. Religious fasting was observed as a sign of mourning for sin with the object of deprecating divine wrath or winning divine compassion. The prophets often condemned the abuse of the custom for Israelites superstitiously thought that it had value even when deserving from purity and righteous of life, righteousness of life, deserved. Um, Isaiah fifty-eight three through seven, Jeremiah fourteen ten through twelve, Zechariah seven and eight. Um, fasts were not necessarily religious in nature; they were commonplace when someone near and dear died as when the inhabitants of Jabesh fasted after they had buried Saul and Jonathan, 1 Samuel 31, 13, and after the death of Abner, 2 Samuel 1, 12. There are few references to fasting in the Gospels, but what is said shows that frequent fasts were customary with those Jews who desired to lead a especially religious life. We are told that Anna served God with fastings and prayers day and night. Luke 2.37 Again, the Pharisee and the parable says, I fast twice in the week. Luke 18.12 Jesus fasted for 40 days in the wilderness. But it is not clear whether this fast was voluntary or not. There is no reason to doubt that he observed the usual prescribed public fasts, but neither by practice nor by precept did he stress fasting. He was so unesthetic or... Un An ascetic in his ordinary mode of life that he was reproached with being a gluttonous man and a wine bibber matthew eleven nineteen luke seven thirty four in all his teachings he spoke of fasting only twice. The passages are as follows matthew six sixteen through eighteen in this passage, voluntary fasting was pre uh, presupposed as a religious exercise, but Jesus warns against making it an occasion for a parade of piety. The important thing is purity and honesty of intention. Fasting should be to God, not to impress men. Jesus approves of fasting if it is an ex expression of inner contrition and devotion. The externalism of the Pharisees has its own reward. Matthew nine fourteen through seventeen, Mark two eighteen through twenty two, Luke five thirty three through thirty nine. Here the disciples of John. And of the Pharisees asked Jesus, Why do we and the Pharisees fast off, but thy disciples fast not? Jesus replies that fasting, which is a sign of mourning, would be inconsistent with the joy which should be characterize those who know that the Messiah has finally come and is now with them. The time will come, however, when he will be taken away, and then the disciples will mourn. It is obvious that the reference to his being taken away is his crucifixion, not his ascension. 
for the ascension signifying the completion of his redemptive work is no occasion for mourning. Jesus here sanctions fasting as he does in the Sermon on the Mount, but he refuses to enjoin it on his disciples. In the parables of the old wineskins and the old garment, he shows that fasting belongs to the body of old observances and customs and is not uh, congruous with the liberty of the gospel. The new era that he inaugurates must have new forms of its own. The reference to fasting in Matthew 17.21 and Mark 9.29 are regarded by textual scholars as corruptions of the text. <laughs> okay, I don't agree with that, but we'll continue. The Acts of the Apostles has a few direct references to fasting. The church at Antioch fasted and prayed before sending out Paul and Barnabas as missionaries, Acts 13.2 and 3. On Paul's first missionary journey, elders were appointed in every church with prayer and fasting, Acts 14.23. The reference to the fasting of Cornelius in Acts 10.30 is an interpolation. The only other direct references to fasting in the New Testament are found in Second Corinthians 6.5 and 11.27, where Paul describes his sufferings for Christ and here most likely has in mind involuntary fasting. There are therefore in the New Testament only four indisputable references to voluntary fasting for religious purposes, two by our Lord in the Gospels and two in the Acts of the Apostles. Jesus does not disprove of the practice, but says nothing to condemn it. The apostolic church practiced it, and perhaps only as a carryover from Judaism, since most of the early disciples were Jews. So I'm actually pretty disappointed with this, because <laughs> they, uh, they just exclude that whole, um, this kind comes by prayer and fasting verse, which I think is a really important verse as far as fasting goes, and uh, so that's pretty bad on their part, but there's still a lot of good things out of this too, so I'm going to try to study these, all these sources together and study all the verses where it's mentioned in the Bible and hopefully summarize, uh, so, and again, I've made a website that I'm slowly building and working on, it'll take some time. But it is acceptyebeconverted.com, so please check that out. Thank you. God bless. Accept ye be converted, and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven.